Well, so if you ask people like me who come from the internet world, we would just say that non-internet companies, look, they're great, we love you, but you're probably only going to be around for another 15 or 25 years before you become completely disrupted. Um, so look, is there room for non-internet companies in the future? Look, I think non-internet companies need to pivot their businesses. They need to invest online. They need to pivot to be more of an online focused company. And you know, they, they need to change. Ch you know, change is constant across humans history and if you don't change you become a dinosaur and we all know what happened to the dinosaurs. And another uh, example they used in the animal kingdom the small fish versus the big fish you're exactly. going to see a catch up there. Exactly so you know I, th I think what, what is beautiful is that and at conferences like this is you know um, as the small fish unite and slowly nibble 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 away at the big fish you're going to see a situation where the 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 big fish don't exist anymore now you know let's use grab taxi for example grab taxi is a disruptive internet business they are the small fish grab taxi is now a company that has raised you know 700 million us dollars but yet they're the disruptive small fish so you're going to see some amazing things happen from internet companies in this part of the world how feasible though are some of the valuations that we're seeing now Oh, I think the valuations are completely feasible. I mean, <clears throat> from someone who's outside of the internet world, I mean, it, it seems it seems challenging. It seems it's like, how do these companies do this? You know, how do you, you know, I give, I use iProperty as an example. One of the largest online property portals in the region, publicly listed today, would be worth 550 million U.S. dollars. And people say, how, how can you be worth more than the newspaper company? And I can understand where they come from. But then here's the funny thing: if you ask anybody on the street that needs to find a place to live or a place to rent, you say, are you using the newspaper or using the internet? And I guarantee you eight out of 10 people will say, I'm using the internet. And then, so when you start to realize that the consumers have shifted to the online channel, then you start to realize that the valuations will shift to the online channel as well. So we're seeing a lot of businesses move away from that asset ownership as well, yeah. uh, moving more into OPEX versus CAPEX. The business of the future, are they going to see uh, a shift in asset ownership? Oh, completely. I mean, I'll tell you what's amazing. So if you look at things like Uber and GrabTaxi, you know, it's, they're really starting to disrupt um, the ownership of cars. So it makes you start to wonder, why do I want to buy a car? I have to pay insurance, I have to pay finance payment, I have to buy petrol, I have to, I go out of town, I have to worry that the car is sitting there unused, and then when I finally use it, the engine doesn't work. I mean, whereas with the push of one button, I could leave this hotel and have 20 cars outside the front begging to take me anywhere in KL, you know, and I don't have to pay them. It's automatically linked to my credit card. I mean, I think this, these are business models that are not only disrupting how you book a taxi, they're going way beyond that. Now, now I'm making people start to think, why do I need to buy a car? Like, why do I need to own a car? It's, it's annoying, it's stressful, expensive. Why can't I just have a car when I want it and pay as I go? How viable, though, is that sharing ideal when there's still a lot of policy support that has to come into the picture? I think, you know, policy support will, will, is always there, but at the end of the day, I think the consumer, what the consumer wants to do, the policy support will eventually follow. So, you know, if consumers want to rent the spare bedroom in their house to tourists from overseas, at the end of the day, the legislation will be changed to suit what consumers want. And the conversations that you're seeing, is that moving fast enough to catch up? You know what, it, it, uh, legislation never moves as fast as how internet entrepreneurs want to move. You know, internet entrepreneurs are moving at light speed, but you know what, at the end of the day, it's, you know, rest assured, the fundamental premise that we always work with, if we have something that consumers want, everything else will fall into place. Now you don't play according to borders, which market's the most exciting in the region right now? Oh wow. Um, what, so what we love is, we just, we just love the emerging markets. We love, when you look at the emerged markets, so you look at the US, you look at Europe, we think, look, mature, great things going on. But when we look at markets like Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, North Africa, Eastern Europe, I mean, you're seeing markets where, you know, the, the take up of smartphone usage is phenomenal. You know, and back to my point earlier, the number of people using smartphones in Southeast Asia, 250 million more than America, and one of the reasons why that's happened is that you have something like 100 million people in Southeast Asia who don't have internet at home. The, they, they, they don't even have a laptop or a desktop. This, the mobile phone was their first connected device. Well, you, didn't have, you didn't have that in America. Everybody had a laptop or a desktop at home. So you're seeing this huge leapfrog effect where 
digital businesses can benefit hugely from because there's this massive audience, new audience of people that have smartphones and want to do things with them. All right, give us a little bit of a hint here, Patrick. What industry do you think is ripe for disruption? Okay, so Sophie, when we look at the online world and what people are doing, it's, it's, uh, we look at finance, we think finance is ripe for huge disruption, education, healthcare, and entertainment. One of the things that we're really bullish on is a company called iFlix, which we're involved in. And you know, our, our crazy vision, our crazy goal is that there's a billion people in the world, and if they want to watch a great movie or great TV show on their phone when they're stuck in traffic, they can do it with the press of a button. It's legal, it's beautiful, it streams perfectly, and you know, that, that's our crazy vision over the next couple of years for iFlix.